All right, guys, thanks. Uh, thanks for sticking around. Um, you know, I mean, tonight, very disappointing loss tonight. Um, you know, it's hard to know where to begin. I, I thought we played fantastic in the first half. You know, I thought we did a lot of good things offensively with 43 points. I thought we really shared the ball and moved it and, and got the ball to open areas. And, um, and then the second half, it just was like a tale of two different games. You know, they give them credit. They're, they're definitely an outstanding team very talented team and um, you know they they came out and hit a quick eight points to start the second half and then they kind of smelled some blood in the water and and they kept attacking and you know the the 53 points obviously is one thing but you know to to only score 13 points and have a couple field goals and like we just have to play better and I got to help these guys better you know and, and that's what I told them after is uh, my staff and I got to do a better job helping you guys when when things are running a little bit dry, um, you know, because I thought we did get some good looks during that stretch that we just missed. We missed some free throws. We missed some layups around the basket. And then I thought we had some really sloppy turnovers that we didn't have in the first half. I think we had four turnovers in the first half and we were really moving the ball and finding the open guys. And and then the second half, you know, just really got away from us. And then when we lost the lead, you know, I just, they just, they just smelled, smelled the blood in the water and, and, uh, and really attacked like a great, uh, like a great team does. So very tough loss. Um, you know, we, we have to bounce back. I mean, we're six games in, um, we got a great opportunity going forward, um, playing a lot of great teams night in and night out. This league is, is, is just loaded with great teams. And, um, but we're very disappointed. We're very disappointed, especially the way we played in the first half and, Thought we had a good stranglehold of the game, and um, you know, it just it just really got away from from us in a big way in the second half, which is uh, which is disappointing and and something we got to get better. So I'm open for questions. First question for David Cobb. Yeah, hey, Chris, um, with you guys going from Luca Garza to Hunter Dickinson, now Kofi Coburn tonight in consecutive games, uh, I'm just kind of curious from your perspective how unique the challenge is of this league, uh, specifically in terms of the big guys that you have to face every night. Yeah, no, it's very, very challenging. I mean, those are three of the best players in the country, uh, let alone in the Big Ten. And they're big guys, and they're skilled, and they're good. And so – and the thing that makes it very challenging is the supporting cast around those guys. You know, the, the guys that Luca plays with at Iowa, the guys that Kofi plays with here tonight, the guard play that he, he plays with. And then, uh, and obviously with Hunter, you know, the guys that he, so it, it makes it very challenging because if you put too much attention on those guys and you get hurt, you know, by, by the rest of the team. And, and so um, it makes it hard. You got to try to do your best work and not give those guys easy baskets you know, try to make them work hard for what they get. I thought in the first half, I thought we did a pretty good job of that. You know, we, we were able to pick a couple. The other thing is you got to be ready to attack those guys on the other end. You know, and I thought in the first half, we did a pretty good job of that. We drove them, we posted them, we got a couple fouls. Um, and then the second half, we just, we were very inept on the offensive end, but he was able to get a really good rhythm. But there's tremendous players, tremendous big guys in this league, and it makes it really hard to game plan against them. Yeah, and just a quick follow-up. I know the, the comparison game can be hard, but, I mean, do you remember a, a, a year in recent memory when the league has been this tough just in terms of the quality of the of the big guys? Well, I mean, last year was pretty good, too, you know, because we, you know, you had Otoro, you know, you had uh, uh, Jalen Smith, who was a lottery pick, you know, from Maryland. So I think these last two years, you know, the collection – and all these guys that were saying Dickinson wasn't there, but Michigan had Tex Teske and, you know, Ohio State had Caleb Wesson. Um, so, you know, Penn State had Mike Watkins. So, I mean, the last two years, and it's and it's really kind of different because if you look at kind of the way the game's going, whether it be on a professional level uh, or a lot in the college game, you're seeing spacing and three-point shooting. And, and this league has, has still remained to have the dominant big man you know, which, which can be very, very effective as, as we're seeing with a lot of these teams. Thanks, Chris. Next question for Louie. Hey, Coach, Louis Vicaire. Um, Boo Boo, he's really been struggling. He, he was scoreless again a second time. Uh, what have you seen from him? And, um, you know, what's your message to him right now? 
Yeah, and I, I mean, I, I want him to stay upbeat. We got to we got to get his confidence back. You know, there's no question he's had a couple of tough nights shooting the basketball uh, after playing incredibly well. You know, the first three games, and um, you know that's that's my, my staff and I we're we're still we believe in him. Uh, we can help him. You know, it's it's obvious that teams are are really trying to to take him out of the game. You know, and tonight it was with fouls. You know, and that he could never get a rhythm all night. He, he was, I just felt like he was in foul trouble. He had two and a half. He picked up a charge. Uh, first play of the second half, so I took him out. We tried to bring him back early just to see if he could get a little bit of a rhythm going. And he fouled on a three-point shooter to get his fourth. So he just could never tonight, you know, stay on the court with the foul trouble. But um, we're going to keep working with him. We're going to watch film. We're, you know, we have the utmost confidence in, in Boo. And, and he's shown he can play at a really high level. And uh, we just got to get him back uh, doing that. And it's a collective effort. It's not just about him. It's, it's all of us helping him kind of get back to that level of play. Next question for Paul Banks. Hey, Coach. Um, a lot is made about the concept of tail of two halves or second half adjustments, but I mean, in your experience, how much does a game turn after the intermission? Like, how much can really change once you have the break? Yeah, I mean, well, tonight it changed a lot. Um, it just depends, you know. And, and I think what you see, too, when, with the lack of any kind of crowd, I, I think you see momentum shifts even more drastic this year, you know, because you don't maybe at home – you know, we could get a little bit of an energy if, if, if we were struggling, you know, same thing or on the road, you know, it, it can be a little bit tougher, um, you know, with no one in the building, when a team starts real, like I thought we had a lot of momentum in the first half and we had the energy and we had the life and, and then they hit us with that 8 spurt and I think a minute and a half there to start the second half and you kind of felt the energy shift and it gave them life. And then you really heard their bench and you heard their energy because, you know, these people don't realize you see it on TV, but these gyms are empty. So, you know, the, the momentum, I think this year, more than any, you see more drastic shifts uh, just because of the lack of people in the building. I know it's just hypothetical, but how do you think things might have changed if um, you would have had a full house tonight and mostly, you know, your fans in the crowd? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, it's at the end of the day, it's the players out there playing. Um, I think every all I feel badly that the players don't get to play in the normal Big Ten environments because they're so good. You know, everywhere you go, people are passionate about their teams and there are so many good teams this year. So I bet the the places would be packed more than ever. You know, so it's it's I feel for the guys that they don't get a chance to play in those kind of atmospheres. But at the end of the day, the players are out there playing. So Fans are great and atmospheres are great, but you know it's it's about the guys out there making plays, getting stops, playing defense, and you know tonight in the second half, you know it was you know Illinois just dominated us in every facet. Last question for Leah. Hi, coach. In a game like tonight, where you know the shooting challenges are kind of isolated more to one half rather than the game as a whole, how do you talk your team through that and kind of move forward when? You know, it might not be challenges overarching, but more in like a certain segment of the game. Yeah, well, you just try to, are you getting good shots? You know, and that that's the thing you talk about in the huddle. Are we getting, you know, and, and I thought early in the second half, we, we were turning the ball over. And so we were either turning the ball over or we were attacking in transition when a lot of times they had the numbers, you know, and I thought we just got a little impatient and a little, they were able to block some shots at the rim. Um, and then, there was a stretch where we were kind of trying to hang around where I thought we got some really good shots, you know, and what, you know, and that, that's what you have to are, you know, are, are you just miss, are you executing and missing shots? Or are you not running good offense? And I thought it was in the, in the second half, we did not run for much of it. It was not great offense, but then there were also segments where I thought we did good things and we just missed, missed a couple layups at the basket or we missed, you know, an open shot. And that happens. That's part of basketball. So I think it's just kind of taking the temperature of, are we doing what we are trying to do? Are we getting the right shots? And, you know, and, and in the second half tonight, I thought it was, it was turnovers early. And then I thought once we lost the lead, you know, we just, we lost our poise and, um, and we were just never able to get back in the game. 
Thanks, Coach. Appreciate your time. All right. Thanks, guys.